Okay, hello there, I'm Dennis. Welcome to my channel. In today's journey, we're gonna go over Nobara Linux. Nobara Linux is based on Fedora Linux, or they don't they say specifically don't consider Nobara Linux a a Fedora spin because Fedora does not even recognize Nobara Nobara, I guess. Uh, but it's not an officially supported so you won't be able to get some official support through Fedora, but you'll get support through Nabara. Get on their web page. Here is the home page, nabaraproject.org. Tells you a little bit about it right off the bat. It says the site is a work in progress. It's Nabara Project is put simply as a modified version of Fedora Linux and user friendly fixes added to it. It's a very good workstation OS. However, however anything involving any kind of third party or proprietary packages is usually absent from a fresh install. A typical point and click user can often struggle with how to how to get a lot of things working beyond the basic browser off office documents and that comes with the OS without having to take extra time to search documentation. Now there's a lot that's that sentence said a whole bunch and it's very true. I run Fedora on a daily basis on one of my machines and I, I just like it but it was not a simple point and click install and i'm done i had to do some research enable some repositories install a bunch of uh, streamers and codecs and such as that so they got that going for them and they just came out with this release and they've got patches here fixes that they updated uh, general usage improvement video or nvidia uh, Blender, let's see, back up to the top here. This is their documentation. Uh, I found this interesting. I installed OBS Studio and it's running right now as a flat pack. Uh, bring up a terminal, I'll show you that. And oh, we got OBS Studio right here as a flat pack. And I didn't see this until just yesterday. So I'm gonna click on it says packages Nobara provides that should not be replaced by flat packs. You click on view view details and then here on read the article itself, it says definitely list OBS Studio as one of those that you should use from the repository. However, when I tried to install it from OBS when I tried to install OBS Studio through the regular DNF install, it never even found OBS Studio. So that's the reason why I jumped straight to a flat pack instead of researching this. And I'm not sure, you know, I could have been doing something wrong at that point. I don't know. But anyway, they have a lot of good documentation. Here's the Nabara project. I found this uh, interesting article here on uh, reddit.com or Linux gaming. The Nabara project, to put it simply, is Fedora Linux with user-friendly fixes added to it. Fedora is a very good workstation. We just read all that. Some of the important things that are missing from it, especially with regards to gaming, include Wine dependencies, OBS Studio, third-party Kodak packages such as those for GS Streamer or G Streamer, third-party drivers such as NVIDIA, and even small package fixes here and there. This project aims to fix most of those issues with a better gaming and streaming content creation experience. In, anyway, I thought this was a, a fairly interesting article. It does tell you a little bit more. And it's a glorious egg roll apparently is the developer or one of the developers. And there, there's, I, I really tried to find a lot of information. For instance, Nobara. If I just type, type in Nobara, I get this anime uh, picture or drawing or whatever you call that and I, and I get no real definition of I've found no real definition of what no bar even stands for uh, I'm thinking no bar a <laughs> I don't know it doesn't say I've, I've read trying to find it done specific searches trying to find it but couldn't do it right here on their home page is where you'll go for your your uh, download I'm going to minimize this and I recorded also the first boot and the update. So let's go through that. Just started here. All right, so I'm booting into the ISO. I downloaded the ISO, which is the 
of their flagship model and it uses the arc menu all right so we're going to boot into it looks just like gnome it is gnome you know the installer will come up right away all right so i was not online and it threw this error right here or caution comment whatever it might be called and so i went ahead and got connected to the internet which it should really allow you a chance to do this before the installer starts in my opinion so once i found my connection it did pick up my wi-fi signed in give it a second here and it should say connected yep, there we go connected now we can start the installer i wanted to hit the back button and try to go back and start restart the installer just verifying that we're online i must say this install took quite a while uh, getting through the installation and partitioning and selecting packages and time zone and all that was fairly quick and it was standard kyle morris install so there was no new surprises there so pick your time zone keyboard and i'm going to erase this disk but i'm going to manually partition it let's look and see what it would do if we said swap with hibernate it's going to give us a one gigabyte swap no 17 point gigabyte swap way too much <laughs> so i'm gonna that's probably the same when you're on a laptop too so i'm gonna, I'm gonna pass, fast forward this right here because it's just the partitioning and there we go um, we're done so that's what i did right there now i gave it a 600 gigabyte efi partition and the reason was if you'll notice on that first screen there when i uh, elected to see what they would do with the partitioning they allotted the 600 kilobyte not kilobyte megabyte for that so i went ahead and just increased it to a, a gigabyte so it's not gonna matter i didn't want that to be any kind of hindrance but I figured if they had wanted 600, I was going to give them more. And there's a basic summary of what's going to happen here. Right. And you don't get any cards. At least I didn't get any cards. But they do provide this little button over here. Side the out the about button. And it will show you what's happening. Sort of like a debug screen. And I'm going to skip forward. <laughs> They're using the ARC menu. This is my first experience with ARC menu. I actually like it. <laughs> Comes with GNOME disk by default. Fast forward again. This took a long time. <laughs> it seemed like. You know the saying watch pot never boils well i watched this whole thing and was amazed at how long it actually took let's see home system monitor comes in by default it says we're using two and a half gigs of ram about 25 percent of the processor neofetch comes by default we're getting Fedora Linux 37, which Fedora is up to 38. I just upgraded mine. I guess this might be called a taskbar. <laughs> I'm not sure. It's actually a, a fairly nice layout. I got used to it pretty quick. See no cards. running bin sh i'm gonna skip forward there we go all right so now the fun really begins i'm gonna reboot i should have powered off and removed the iso but i just reboot but actually i did power off took the iso out or the yeah the usb out and rebooted all right so this would be your welcome screen here's my first mistake 
you see I launched the updater, but now I'm getting also the option at the same time to download the uh, restricted codecs and such. So now I've got that screen sitting there saying it's waiting for that process ID to stop and the update. I can't tell what it's even doing. <laughs> so we are connected. So I'm going to skip forward a little bit. I'm pretty sure I get aggravated here. Look through their menu, I guess. Skip forward. So I just stopped that one process, and now this one says it's going to start. And this was the codex. So I had to stop the update, which is what I launched, not the. Not the uh, codex stuff. Let's skip forward. Got a warning flag there on Appalette. So you can see this is just taking forever. And it was, I said, well, I'm just going to shut everything down and reboot and see if that helped. I mean, that's how aggravated I was getting. And you might see the note there in the bottom it's times 250%. So let's launch the updater again. And again, it's trying to give me the codex before it gives me the update. I just canceled off of that. Try it one more time. That's three tries unsuccessfully to try to run an update. Kept wanting to install the the streamers and such. So let's just run update all by itself. Pseudo DNF update. Give it my password. And if you'll see here, it's going to carry on just like it should. So I'm not sure what the deal was on the, the welcome screen. Eventually, like today, if I run it, it would work just fine. After this update and I rebooted, it seemed to work just fine. It was just the first initial update that was just not going through. I had the screen cut out on me one time, so I had to make sure that so we're getting some codecs right there through the update. Open to open H264. This. Just do a few tweaks here and there. Actually, I'm going to probably skip forward. updates get forward get forward get forward all right another option there we're going to import a gpg key successfully did that we're going to do it again see so this right here the importing those keys will tell you that something was not synced up correct with my initial update attempt and through the terminal it updated and everything started or acting mostly normal and the audio does work there is a glitch though that you have to work around and i'll go through all that on part two right now i just wanted to go through the installation basically i'm gonna skip forward skip forward i rebooted let me go back to that real quick see if i can catch it i want to show you that we have a snapshots this is how we would get to it right here i'm gonna pause you can see Navarro Linux is highlighted, but right underneath it there, you'll see another Navarro Linux 6.2.11. That's the kernel. So this would be a, if I if an update breaks my system and I reboot, then I can select another time frame there. So we're going to reboot. So now it's wanting to install those codecs again, which you'll see here, it's going to go right through. It was just that first initial update that seemed to slow or stop the process. Let me skip forward. Choose a login manager. That's one of your options in this welcome screen. 
This is actually a very nice welcome screen as compared to some other ones I've seen that have no real no guidance, no real steps. For instance, Linux Mint welcome screen, it takes you right through. If you boot it into that machine for the very first time, you would know what to do because it's listed there what to do. and gives you an order in which to do those things. Oh, uh, but and this one does too. It's really fairly nice. Got some wallpapers. Well, fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. That's taking 40 forever. <laughs> For those that don't know what 40 forever is, that's a long time. It just seemed like it took forever. This install is now 9 12 according to that system clock. And I started this at 8. 8 o'clock, 8 a.m. So we're an hour and 13 minutes into it, and I'm just now getting the first codex installed. So uh, we'll skip forward. We started at 8, it's now 9 14. And I'm not sure something was to do with that not being in sync would not allow that updater to work. And as you saw, it works now because that's just how I installed the media codex. Okay, so we'll stop this because I'm fixing the power off that machine and we'll go back to here and we're back to my full screen. Now that's Navarro Linux and that was the installation and just the problem that I had. Now you may not have that problem, I don't know. I was using Wi-Fi and so you could point a little bit of slowness to the Wi-Fi, but in, my, in the Wi-Fi's defense, it, it works. <laughs> So that was not it. And you saw the updater well on the welcome screen only worked after I did a manual update. And so those things, you know, I didn't I I wouldn't have known just known to do that. I wouldn't even have known to try that. I was at the point at that I was gonna have to start doing some online research. Why won't no borrow update using their updater? I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I just knew to bring up a terminal and manually uh, ask for an update. And after that point, everything seems to work. And I am going to do a part two. I've been living in this now for a little over a week. And I've learned some things about Nobaro that could be considered positive, And I've learned some things that I consider negative. <laughs> and you might as well. In fact, you may know the, a very simple workaround on it. I don't know. I'll probably find one too before I post it. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Appreciate you watching. Peace out. Bye.